Back in the 1990s, a team of astronomers led by Adam Rees and Brian Schmidt set out to measure how fast the universe's expansion was slowing down. They focused on a special kind of exploding star, Type 1a supernovae, which serve as reliable, standard candles for measuring cosmic distances. At the time, there were two main competing theories about the universe's fate. Either it had enough mass for gravity to eventually halt the expansion and cause a big crunch, or it was too light, meaning it would expand forever at a constant rate. But what Rees, Schmidt, and their team discovered was astonishing. Instead of slowing down, the universe's expansion was speeding up. Something was pushing the cosmos apart faster and faster. And to explain this cosmic curveball, they turned to an old idea the cosmological constant, now known as dark energy. In 1915, Albert Einstein introduced a radical new framework for understanding gravity through his theory of general relativity. Rather than describing gravity as a force acting at a distance, Einstein demonstrated that mass and energy affect the curvature of space-time itself. This formulation fundamentally altered the conceptual basis of physics. The initial form of Einstein's field equations was expressed as, where the terms on the left describe the geometry of space-time and its energy-matter content on the right. Einstein's equations, as originally formulated, implied a dynamically evolving universe. However, the dominant scientific and philosophical perspective at the time held that the universe was static and eternal. To reconcile his equations with this static view, Einstein introduced an additional term, the cosmological constant lambda, in 1917, modifying the field equations as, the inclusion of lambda represents a uniform energy density filling all of space. In mathematical terms, it introduces a repulsive effect that counteracts the gravitational attraction of matter, thereby allowing for a static universe. This additional term was consistent with the mathematical structure of general relativity, though its physical justification was less certain. Subsequent theoretical developments, however, began to explore solutions without the need for a static assumption. In the early 1920s, cosmologists like Friedman and Lemaitre independently derived solutions to Einstein's field equations, assuming the universe was homogeneous and isotropic, and arrived at a conclusion that the universe is either expanding or contracting. Einstein initially rejected Friedman's paper, claiming he had made a mathematical error. But by the next year, after being shown that Friedman's mathematics was correct, Einstein published a note in Zeitschrift for Physik in 1923, acknowledging Friedman's work. He admitted his mistake, but remained unconvinced about the physical reality of a dynamic universe. When Lemaitre presented his model at the 1927 Solvay conference, Einstein reportedly responded, your calculations are correct, but your physics is abominable. Again, he was skeptical. Einstein still held on to the idea of a static universe and was not ready to accept cosmic expansion. But by the late 1920s, empirical evidence began to challenge the notion of a static universe. In 1929, Edwin Hubble published observations indicating that distant galaxies are receding from us, providing strong evidence for an expanding universe. In early 1931, after visiting Hubble and seeing the Mount Wilson Observatory's data firsthand, Einstein publicly abandoned the static universe model. He embraced the idea of an expanding universe and accepted that the cosmological constant was unnecessary for this model. Consequently, for several decades, the consensus shifted toward models of a matter-dominated expanding universe without a significant contribution from Lambda. However, this picture began to change with the advent of more precise observational techniques in the late 20th century. Research groups, notably the High Redshift Supernova Search Team led by Adam Ries and Brian Schmidt, and the Supernova Cosmology Project led by Saul Perlmutter, undertook systematic surveys of distant Type 1a supernova. Type 1a supernova are one of the standard candles of the universe. A standard candle is a type of object or event that emits a specific, known amount of light, allowing scientists to find its distance with a straightforward formula. This works because light sources appear predictably dimmer the farther they are from an observer, since astronomers know how much light a standard candle gives off. 
They can determine its distance by measuring how dim it appears from Earth. Since only very bright objects or events are visible in the far reaches of the universe, the options for standard candles are limited. Some of the best and most reliable are supernovae. There are a few different kinds of supernovae, but the best for standard candles are a type 1a. These supernovae involve a white dwarf, the leftover core of a dead star, and one other star in a binary system. Some of the time, it may be a white dwarf and a larger host star. Scientists think the white dwarf steadily accumulates material shed by the host star, gaining mass in the process. When it reaches a specific tipping point, about 1.4 times the mass of the sun, known as the Chandrasekhar limit, the white dwarf has gained enough mass to trigger a runaway reaction at its core, and it explodes spectacularly, sending out an expanding sphere of super hot material that glows from the energy of the explosion. In other cases, scientists think two white dwarf stars may form the binary. Either the stars finally merging together triggers the supernova, or it happens as they spiral in closer and closer, while the more massive of the two pulls material off its companion in the final few minutes. Before they merge, it reaches the same mass tipping point and goes supernova, always releasing a similar amount of energy. Because white dwarf explosions are also similar, the energy and light output of type 1, a supernovae, are easy to standardize. They are rare in any one galaxy, occurring only once every 500 years or so in the Milky Way. But because there are so many galaxies, astronomers using current telescopes observe them about 100 times a year. By comparing the observed brightness with the intrinsic brightness, astronomers can determine their distances within 6%. By 1997, the High Redshift team had finished collecting their first set of data. Adam Rice was picked to lead the analysis of all data up to date. He measured the expansion rate of the universe both now and in the past, allowing him to track how that rate had evolved over several billion years. In his efforts to quantify the universe's deceleration, Adam Rees relied on the Hubble Law, which links the distance of galaxies to their recessional velocities. By observing Type 1a supernovae, whose intrinsic brightness allows for accurate distance measurements, he could determine how the expansion rate has evolved over time. Employing the multicolor light curve shape, MLCS method, he and others had developed, he could refine these distance estimates, enhancing the precision of the analysis. By quantifying the deceleration, represented by a parameter called Q0, he could then infer the total mass of the universe, denoted as omega m. The reasoning was straightforward. The greater the mass, the stronger gravity's pull against expansion, and the more pronounced the deceleration. This relationship was encapsulated in this surprisingly simple equation. Using a computer program he developed to calculate the mass required for the deceleration from his measurements, he initially encountered a stunning anomaly in the fall of 1997. His computed value for omega m turned out to be negative. The only way to account for the observed changes in the expansion rate was to posit a kind of negative mass. In other words, Rather than the universe decelerating as expected, the data indicated that it was actually accelerating. This simple equation assumed that matter was the only significant component of the universe. At first, he hadn't considered any forces beyond the gravity due to matter. Yet his computational models indicated that only an imaginary negative mass could explain the apparent acceleration, effectively reversing the conventional attractive force of gravity. To capture this more comprehensively, the equation for the deceleration parameter in Einstein's theory of general relativity is refined to Q0 equals omega m divided by 2, minus omega lambda, where omega lambda represents the energy density of empty space. Einstein originally introduced this term as the cosmological constant, a form of repulsive gravity. The Supernova Cosmology Project, SCP, led by Saul Perlmutter, played a pivotal role in confirming the findings of the high z supernova search team that the universe's expansion is accelerating. Both teams independently utilized Type 1a supernova to measure distances to faraway galaxies and map the universe's expansion history. In May 1998, the High z team became the first to publish evidence of this acceleration, revealing that distant supernovae were fainter and thus farther away than expected in a decelerating universe. 
Earlier that year, in January 1998, the SCP had presented similar findings at a press conference, with their formal publication following later. The SCP's independent observations and analysis provided critical confirmation of the High z team's discovery, as both groups concluded that the universe's expansion is speeding up, driven by a mysterious force later termed dark energy. This convergence of results from two separate research efforts solidified a paradigm shift in cosmology, earning Adam Rice, Brian Schmidt, and Saul Perlmutter the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. The Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, bolstered by the discovery that dark energy contributes approximately 70% to the universe's total energy density, counteracting gravitational attraction on cosmic scales, swiftly emerged as the standard framework in cosmology following observations of accelerated expansion in the late 1990s. Subsequent refinements in calibration techniques and systematic error control further solidified its position by reinforcing evidence for dark energy's role in driving this expansion. However, this widely accepted paradigm has faced scrutiny from alternative perspectives. The Timescape model, proposed by David Wiltshire in 2007, offers an alternative perspective to the widely accepted Lambda CDM cosmological model. Unlike the standard model, which assumes the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on large scales and attributes its accelerating expansion to dark energy, the timescape model suggests that this acceleration may be an illusion. It posits that the universe's expansion is influenced by local variations in matter density, causing time to flow differently across regions. Specifically, time passes more slowly in dense areas like galaxies due to stronger gravitational effects, while it flows faster in under-dense voids. This differential time dilation could mimic the effects of cosmic acceleration when observing distant objects, potentially eliminating the need for dark energy as an explanation. A notable advancement in testing the timescape model occurred in 2024 with a study utilizing the Pantheon Plus dataset, which includes observations of over 1,500 Type 1a supernovae. This analysis compared the timescape model to the standard Lambda CDM model and found that the former provided a slightly better fit to the supernova data. This finding suggests that the perceived acceleration of the universe's expansion might be explained without invoking dark energy, challenging a fundamental component of the standard model. However, the improvement in fit was not statistically significant enough to definitively favor the timescape model over its mainstream counterpart. Critics highlight that the model relies on untested assumptions about how inhomogeneities affect cosmic averages, and it must still prove consistent with other critical observations, such as the cosmic microwave background, CMB, and large-scale structure of the universe. The timescape model faces significant hurdles, particularly its mathematical complexity, as it requires solving general relativity equations for an inhomogeneous universe, a task complicated by the absence of exact solutions. Despite these challenges, the model holds promise for addressing unresolved issues in cosmology, such as the Hubble tension, a discrepancy between different measurements of the universe's expansion rate. By allowing for local variations in expansion due to density differences, the timescape model might reconcile these conflicting observations. Missions like the Euclid satellite and the upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope are expected to deliver high-precision data on supernovae and other cosmological phenomena. These observations could provide the rigorous testing needed to validate or refute the timescape model. If confirmed, this theory could revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos, potentially rendering dark energy unnecessary and prompting a major shift in cosmological theory.